now, this is a good morning. <laughs> so Nintendo gave us more information about the upcoming Splatoon update today. And I would dare to say that today's update has definitely turned people's opinion around about the update itself. Yesterday, a lot of people were upset because it seemed like we were losing League forever. And Nintendo said, erm, um, actually, we're kind of lying to you again. We're just gonna put it in open. What they've stated is that now, League Power is just gonna be sitting in open, and when you play in a group, you'll have your League Power information right in open. Which, honestly, is a very good compromise, given that I'm sure they don't want to add too many buttons to the menu. And also, I can, like, totally understand that the more things they add as options for people to do, the more split up the player base gets if in the future, let's say, not as many people are playing Splatoon 3. Right now, it's not a problem. Splatoon 3, still updating, has, as I've stated in other videos, at least five more major content updates to go. But who knows, maybe in like four years from now, for example, maybe when Splatoon 4 is around the corner on the new system or something. Hopium. Um, you know, maybe people will have less people to play with or have specific things they prefer by that point, and certain queues could struggle a bit if there's too many options. The curious thing to wonder about is when you have a full group, will you be able to only queue against other groups? Slash, will the matchmaker, like, prioritize you playing against other groups? Because if so, that fixes so many of the problems that people have in League currently. I I'm sure that if you're watching this, you are aware, but currently the way that Anarchy Open works is you can end up fighting against, like, a squad of people who are all mic'd up while you're just, you know, jumping on in for funsies for like two matches at eight at night. And that's, that's, that's not fun. That would be a really good change for open. Cause then you could go into open and have a good casual experience when you're not playing with friends anymore. I wouldn't be shocked that if this change happens, it might only be if you're playing with a full group of four and have like a proper power, as opposed to like, hey, we're gonna duo up Let's go ahead and get our power, yada ba, we're only gonna play against other duos. That might be gone, but we won't really know until the time comes. They've also finally added the ability for you to change gear inside of Open without having to stop playing, which is like, so good. <laughs> I'm sure there have been times where you're playing Open, and you find a group of people that you really mesh with, but maybe you just really want to change weapons. And so either you can work better with them, or maybe you just want to level up a different weapon because you just got your first star, you got your Sheldon license, and you gotta move on to the next. Remember, you're gonna need 11 Sheldon licenses to be able to get everything in the next update. I, I have plenty of them, so this really isn't a worry for me, but... <laughs> I know not everybody has 11 Sheldon licenses lying around. Even though you've had a couple of months to do so, some people wait until the end of the season to go ahead and get all those Sheldon licenses. It's like how some people are going to be on that super catalog grind now to make sure they get everything in time. Remember again, at the end of the month, that last week before the update drops, you'll be able to get bonus EXP, that way you can level up your catalog faster. Kind of like you're playing Splatfest, but it's just going to be all the time. Wee! <laughs> the other big thing though, the, the thing that I'm so excited about, the pain brush. They gave it a fun kit that works for the weapon. The pain brush is now the second mobile weapon that also has a fair amount of range that has wave breaker. Now you could say like, oh, oh, oh but, but range blaster has wave breaker too. And you're not wrong about that. Wave breaker works really well with the range blaster, but it, it's kind of hard to move around sometimes while playing range because we don't have the paint to work with, you can't really paint your feet too, too fast. But this guy, it's a brush, and they gave it Curling Bomb. Now the reason why they gave it Curling Bomb is probably because, you know, they don't want to get burst. But the other thing about it is they state very clearly that the paintbrush kind of winds up a bit slow for that first swing, and then it's faster once you're actually using the brush. The Curling Bomb is going to perfectly pair with the Pain Brush's weakness, which is going to be getting that first swing out and getting some paint on the ground. So you can just move and then get ready to use your Pain Brush. Every line on the Wave Breaker does 45 damage. So I'm really curious as to how much damage each swing of the Pain Brush is going to do. If it's the proper number, I think that the waves of the Wave Breaker are perfect for this weapon. You probably just need two swings of the Pain Brush 
And then you could take out whoever already got tapped by your Wave Breaker. And don't forget, the thing about Wave Breaker is that it also marks your opponents after they've been touched by the waves. So this would mean that you would know exactly where your opponents are with the Wave Breaker, and then you just turn your pain brush and hit them. Nothing stops you from also just turning the camera once you're already using your pain brush to hit people without having to stop. I think it's going to be a really good kit for this weapon. I'm sure you'll end up giving it another kit down the line, but this starting kit is probably one of the stronger starting kits we've seen for any of these brand new weapons. Between the Nova, the Snipe Rider, the Big Swig, the S-Blast, and the Painbrush, this is the only one that they gave it a bomb on the first kit. Um. <laughs> these highly informative updates are exactly what people need, so they feel a bit more comfortable about the upcoming patch and the changes that are going on. In Japan, this weapon translates as Vincent, which is really cute, because remember, the other brushes in the game also have artist names. The regular ink brush is known as Pablo, and the Octo brush is known as Hokusai. Obviously, Pablo is Pablo Picasso, and I don't know where Hokusai comes from, but I know from the wiki that it is another Japanese artist, which is pretty nice that they're keeping that going. Similar to the curling bomb thing for the Octo brush, the big swig having angle shooter actually is pretty good for it. It's not bad. The big swig can really enjoy the line marker. Having a longer range than most rollers, if you manage to not miss, you could finish people off with the line marker that aren't in your vertical kill range. The line marker's painting radius has also been buffed a couple of times at this point and costs so little that you won't really be hurting by popping this on the ground. It actually needs less ink than actually a burst bomb, so why not use the line marker very, very much and benefit a lot from it? Even though the game has been out for nearly nine months, they're still making big changes. And I'm sure people are, in general, like really happy that we're getting these extra weapons for these random weapon classes. In Splatoon 2, there weren't too many brand new weapons that were added on to existing classes. It was the Clash Blaster, the Nautilus, the Blah Blobber, and the Explosher. Very biased towards sloshers there, which I can't complain about. <laughs> my, um, one, of my, one of my favorite weapons in Splatoon 2 that I didn't use enough was the Explosher. I'm really excited for what else they haven't told us about the Sizzle season. And on top of that, we still don't have the patch notes. Nobody will know if Nintendo has made significant changes to the way that the game works until we get to that point. I'm sure the patch notes will also give more details about how League works, now that it's also being, you know, kind of technically replaced by event matches but still existing in open. We'll find out the fun way what's gonna happen in the future. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good one. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want more information from me for future stuff that goes out in the game. I also have some other stuff I'm working on for Splatoon 3 and possibly other games. So I'll see you in the future. Bye-bye!